Did you guys have raffle tickets? No. No. All right. Okay. So that one's recording. Okay. And it's lined up pretty much the same way that that one is. So. Perfect. Uh, one, three, six. The thing I'm worried about is that this is 37% charge. Oh. Oh. I'm going to see if you put it down. So the thing is, this one is this one right no. here. Yeah. Yeah, that one. That's right. Okay. And then we're going to get rid of books too. So All right. So then we're going to bring extension. If not, we're going to start donating to them to AA or someplace. Because um, folks aren't donating to a fitness closet. And if you want to make a deal, make a deal. I think she's got a thing in her throat, so you probably hush her in <laughs> oh, here's one right here. Did anybody find one for two? Okay, there you go. It's blinking red, so does yep. that mean it's charging? It's no, it doesn't. It means it's running, it's recording, um, but I can't tell that it's uh, charging. Um, Yeah, I don't know. This will be the experiment. Yeah. Alright. Well, I'll... Okay. Are we starting? Oh, are we starting? Am I up? You are at us. All right, if you want to, are we ready? Yes. Okay, we're ready. I think. Karen. All right. It's got to be close. Put it on your desk. No, I will. But I just didn't want it to. Here, you can go ahead and talk. Yep, this is my baby. Her, her little baby. Um, she'll dazzle us with all the colors and stuff that she's going to use. Kim teaches courses at the Scottsdale Artist School and Shima also, I believe. No, I don't teach it. I haven't taught it. Shima. Anyway, so if you come away wishing that you could you know, get more uh, instruction from Kim, uh, the Scottsdale Artist School uh, hosts her for Courses and, and I've also been there. doing a lot of Zoom classes for different places across the country. So. Oh, great. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I don't want this thing to be too close because it seems like it was going. So if I get too loud, please tell me to shut up. Just tone it down. So far, you're not too loud. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, okay. So I, I know um, I have I have demoed here quite a bit, and I I try to make it a little different every time. I don't know if I achieve that. So um, this time I think uh, everybody has their um, supply list that's going to be in my class. I hope. And I had put an example of what your contour drawing should look like on there, and it was a white dog. And somebody asked me this evening um, if they could, or maybe it was the other day, I don't know, asked me if they could use it, and I said, absolutely use it. And it happens to be a white dog. So not only am I gonna do this one today, I have a different one of my girl, and I'm gonna do that one on Saturday. Different pose, lot, um, 
a lot more shadowing things like that so it'll be it'll be a fun one to do so i always like to work from a painting that i have the reference of exactly the same size and i know um like um we were, you guys were just talking about earlier about the mind and the brain and da da da. You got it somehow or another. Artists have had to incorporate all this technology as well, and it's a very difficult thing. Especially as older that we get, the harder it is. <laughs> but I can tell you, I on a Mac you can use a, a program called Split Print. You can only use it on the Mac. You cannot use it on an iPad. You can't use it from your phone. None of those things. Only on the computer. And it's, I think it's about $5. And it's, it, it really is a very nice program. It's very intuitive. The only thing you have to remember to do is when you drag your photo into the plane, you have to change it from pages to inches. And it automatically sizes it for you. If you put one in, you know, one end is going to be 11 inches. It'll automatically make the other one what it's supposed to be. On a PC, I believe you can get this one for free. It's split at the symbol print. I think that one's free. And I think it's the same program. I'm not even sure. I've never seen it. Nobody's ever shown me that one on their computer, so I don't know. But they say it's the same. And um, it will print it up, like here, I've got this on four pieces of paper. You could even tell it to do 36 pieces of paper, and it'll make it massive. Um, but if you change it to inches, then you just need to change that, your inches. <clears throat> so, and I always seem to be attracted to photographs that have a very strong light. Not only in my animals, but in my portraits. It's my... You can see all the way along here that that is exactly what I'm attracted to is light, the light and the shadow, and making your shadows interesting, things like that. So on this particular painting, I went ahead and I put on my masking fluid. I use the PBO, and I've heard where people have had an issue with PBO because it will leave um, your paper a little green sometimes. But I learned recently that that was the um, student grade. <clears throat> you have to make sure that you're getting the professional grade. I didn't know there was a difference. So I went ahead and applied it, assuming you guys didn't want to watch that. But I am going to show you different things that I use to apply it. Right here. Okay, so I used to only apply it with these brushes. You can see there's a bit of a wedge on them. I have a bigger brush and a smaller brush. And I would use the very tip of this to do, like, say, whiskers, something fine. And I you use the flat part if you're going to mask in large areas. I don't like to do that because I personally think that um, masking fluid is it's the angel and it's the devil. <laughs> every time you use it, yep, it's going to keep that paper white. Every single time you take it off, you have to fix it. It always leaves a problem. So just beware. And don't get over-enthusiastic about using it, <laughs> which is very difficult to do, even as you look at my own painting right here. You get putting a little on, and you think, Oh, that's good. I can use a little bit more. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you've got a whole sheet of paper full of masking fluid. But uh, recently, I've gone to using one of the, it's, I think it's called a stylus. Mm -hmm. And you can get these at Joann's or Michael's. They come three in a package, and they're different size heads on each end. And you can get these really thin whiskers, or if you want to use a bigger head, you can make thicker lines. But you'd still have to probably use one of these if you're going to fill it in. Okay, that's that part of it. And I like to keep one of these on handy. And this is a sewing and knitting gauge. Because it seems like every time we start painting, we lose some of the lines. And so after we start painting, we think that eye doesn't look right. 
So this, as long as you're working from exactly the same size as what you have it on your piece of paper, you can come over here and you can make your measurements. You can say, okay, the eye starts there, it ends right there, you come over here, you say, okay, did that work? Yep, that worked. Or you can use it as an angle. Did I get the angle wrong? So these are cheap. I have no idea how much they are, but they're cheap. I like to have lots of them on hand for every place I go. Okay? That reminded me of one more thing, and now what was it? If I remember it, I'll, I'll come up with it, I'll tell you. Okay, so like, um, also when I was uh, drawing this, she's got her harness on, because I don't let her outside without a harness. <laughs> we, I don't think she'd go anywhere, but I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> well, as soon as she, something scares her outside, she's running back in the front door. Uh, but she has gotten out of this harness before because something scared her, and I'm like, ooh, I don't like that. But I'm glad she can get out, but she goes back. So anyway, and she seems to be a perfect model, quite honestly. She's, <laughs> she's so cute. <laughs> she's got all this white fur. She's got little black spots. Um, some of them, I'm going to ignore the ones that are on her back, um, the ones that are around her face. I'll probably get some of those in. And also, I really like these really hard shadows. I like to make connections between my piece of paper and my subject. If we go all the way around her in really hard line, hard shapes, dark colors, that type of thing, it makes it look like she has been pasted and set on top here. I, so I don't want to do that. I want to see where I can make connections. So here where the shadow is hitting my plastic thing, I'm going to lose some of that. I can always pick up a hard line. It's harder to get rid of that hard line after you've laid it down. So we make nice, soft, and, and, the, and it's fur, so we're gonna make sure it's nice and soft, and, and if it gets some blossoms in it, even better, because this is the fun thing about doing animals, it's fur. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody is ever gonna say, that doesn't happen. That does not happen. <laughs> it does happen. And it, it just gives it a, just another level of fur, hair, whatever. And then each one of our things that we're going to paint, we have to realize there's a, a dark, medium, and a light in each one of those. So let's say in her eye, her eye, because it's it's round. It's not a flat surface. This is the flat surface. I have to make it look round. And in order to make a round, she has to have a light, medium, and a dark in her eye. In her eye. In her hair. Like the hair in her ears. We see these nice light things, but there is a mid-tone and then there's a dark. That's what gives it a level of, and it makes it feel like there's depth happening. So we want to make sure to do those things. Time for me to start painting. If I procrastinated enough. <laughs> we all do that too. We all figure out how we're going to not paint. You know, we all want to paint, but it's really easy to figure out a way not to paint. The ironing needs done. Uh, garbage needs to be taken out. All that good stuff. So I like to make up myself a, a puddle of three, three to six colors. On Saturday, I will not be so lenient. You guys can only do about four because we all end up making a mess over here. I've done it, and that's why I'm here to help you. <laughs> so I am going to use, I really wanted to pick some different colors, and it's really difficult for me to do that because when I'm doing white, it seems like you end up kind of going back to some of the same colors. So I'm trying, I'm really trying. <laughs> this one over here is, is a Windsor purple. I, I, the reason why I would never give you guys these colors on, a, um, on my supply list is because it's not a normal color I would use. And if you get it, 
if it sits in your your box, you're going to be saying, hey, Kim, I bought this just for her class, and here it sits, which we have all done. Every one of us has done it. We don't, we don't know any other way. We have to have all the supplies the instructor has, because that's the way it is, period. But I'm, gonna, I'm going to attempt this, and this is truly an experiment for me. So if this does not turn out, we have to say, oh well. Hopefully we learned something. I think that this one is my um, CAD yellow. I have a couple of different colors in here, and since I'm using one I don't normally use, I'm going to use this. This is truly an experiment. I'm not sure if I should be doing this because this could be a real mess. <laughs> And it could be great. And it could be great, exactly. And if you're not willing to take those chances, you will never achieve greatness, okay? Never. If we stick with what we've always known, then we always get the same results. It's a sign of insanity when you do the exact same thing and expect a different outcome. So I'm going to try. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> and the blue... Um, no, it needs to be a kind of a reddish color. Well, I know I'm going to use my sap, uh, serpentine green because I really like that in fur. I don't know what it's going to do with this purple. The, the yellow I'll be fine with. And I think what I will do is pick up some... My brush wants to go to cerulean and I really want to go to the cobalt. So I'm going to go with cobalt. <laughs> we'll see what happens. And that is another reason why I ended up carrying one of these around. My very good, great friend, Grace Howardy, paints from one of these. And I was like, I need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and my aunt and uncle are antiquers, so, and they're in Iowa. They found this one with this little rim around it. Grace is like, that was a good thing. And I'm like, yep, and that one's mine. <laughs> All mine. But since I don't know what this is really gonna do, I'm going to spritz this because I, I want my mixing to happen right here on my piece of paper. I know I have to have a little bit of background happening all the way around. I don't want my background to be very dark. I want it to be just enough so that she comes forward, background goes back, and then I still have some nice connections. So we're going to see how this works. I have used this uh, Windsor purple on portraits and it is, it is really lovely. I like that a lot. But I'm, I'm afraid this is gonna turn all gray with all the, with some of the yellows that I have going here too. So we'll see what happens. So I'm just trying to put down something, some color where I know I have value. And I know I have limited time tonight too, so, or today. It's very difficult for me to think about um, this not being in the evening. Mm -hmm. So. We can use our brush, we can use our finger. We just want these things to start um, mixing. I better get some of this yellow, I suppose. Yellow is one of those colors that pushes all the other colors around it out of the way. So, if you use it, good luck. <laughs> and of course, I have lots of blue here, so this is going to end up being very green. Yeah, for some leaves. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. I, didn't, I don't really care if it drips, but I didn't really want it to drip there. So, and like I said, I really want some of this, I want this nice light to happen on her back. I'm going to fill this in right where she's got her shadow here. And when I do my little spritzing thing, it's because I want this color to move. I don't want it to sit still. I want it to be dynamic. And see, I didn't use any frisking over here, and I don't even know what this purple will do. 
but I am willing to fail because I could fail even if I use all the colors that I know. I could still fail and it has to be okay. And I'm, I say that because I, I'm assuming kind of when we're taking these workshops and stuff, we always really expect that the uh, instructor is gonna do phenomenal things. And someday I may and someday I may not. And that's just the way of it. And I like to tell people too, I can fail just like you can. And if you don't let me fail, I can't let you fail. So, like I said, I'm just trying to get value where I know I have value. I can even pick up some of this like this and come back with just a little water. I think I will take some of my cerulean. Maybe my instincts were right. But we'll see. And I don't want this to be a very strong line, even though it, pro it is pretty strong here. Some of the shadow is from her collar and I have to kind of try to ignore that. But I want this to be a little bit of a softer shadow because again, it's fur. I'm going to take my very dry brush and I'm going to try to do a little bit of a dry brush right through here. I'm not real thrilled with that color, so. Now watch me, by the end of this particular painting, I'll be right back to my regular colors. <laughs> <laughs> it happens! She has a pretty hard shadow right underneath here, but I, I don't want to go in there and make this really hard, strong line. I want to uh, change the color, and if I do little dots here and there, the human eye will just fill in. Comes up this way. I'm letting this dry now, kind of. I have to really, I'm gonna, I really like what's happening with the purple, of course, so I'm going to get more in there because it's very, it's more interesting, I think, with a little more of that purple. Also, when I what colors are on my palette, I that's what also what I use for portraits. I don't I'm not one of those that likes to go around and change my palette or I want to carry five different palettes for five different subjects matter, matters. I just I don't want to. To me that's I put frisket for her whiskers. I have a couple of little spots just so I have a nice hard line where I wanted it along her, um, this edge here. And I did it right across here so, because this should stay mainly a lighter color. Um, and I did a little bit in her ears and the, the whiskers come out. to get uh, some pink and she has a very pink nose which is very difficult to ignore when you know something about an animal so I want to get this in here I don't want it to have a real hard line and even when you know okay a, a dog has a nose a cat has a nose and then there's a distinct line where there's fur per se don't try to paint it that way. It's, it truly is never pretty that way. And it doesn't look natural. 
and I, where it looks beautiful on them, painting wise, doesn't look so beautiful. And the same within the ears. I want to get a little bit going on there. And then I'm going to squirt. And it just makes it look like she's more natural. I, um, I don't know if that had a little piece of something <coughs> that I don't want. Okay, I'll leave it alone. I may even take some of that. I'm kind of liking that. I don't want to get too much of this without it mixing in because otherwise it may just end up looking like she's bleeding. I don't want that either. But if it's, uh, if it's not too dry, I can get some in here. Hopefully it'll liven up some of this. And I, I don't... Uh, if anybody here is really painted with cat red, you know it disappears. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to move over here. I guess I'm really liking this purple. I like um, my mineral violet as well, but um, it's just fun sometimes to try something a little different. Not everything has to be the same. And hopefully what will happen is that the mixing of the yellow and the purple on my paper will look better if I did it here in my cup. Okay, and I also put a little masking fluid right through here. But one thing I want to talk about with this is, even if you've laid down masking fluid, try to do a little bit of um, negative painting all on your own. It will absolutely make it look more natural if you do. And that way, when you take off your masking fluid, you don't have such a mess. I'm going to take my dry brush and I'm, I'm going to butt right up to it. So it softens some of that right up into. This feels like it's a little dark, but quite honestly, we don't know how dark it is because it's not dry. So I really want to go in there with my paper towel, wipe it out. But I'm really working hard at not doing that. <laughs> really hard. So hopefully by me saying those things, you, I know that those are exact same things that you say to yourself. So be kind. If you're not going to be kind to you, there isn't anybody else that will do it for you. So. And please, if there are any questions, just blurt them out. Please blurt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got one. Okay, cool. Are you using a black and white photo for reference to stop yourself from being tempted to use colors that were in the photo? Yes. And I know you've taken from me before. <laughs> absolutely. That is absolutely the reason why I use a black and white photo. I am absolutely um, just as influenced by those colors as you or anybody else. If she had on, this is green. I know that this is green. And since I know it, I'm going to be really tempted to make it green if I put it in here. But since I didn't put it in there, I'm, I'm okay. Everybody else that would paint from this, they don't know it's green. They could make it gray. But if they see that it's green, they're painting green. They will. I, I guarantee you that's exactly the way it would happen. If we can't. We're the, if we're in the workshop on Saturday, should we have the masking already? Uh, if you want, I, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to wait okay. so that you can see how I apply it. Um, but I'll probably apply it as we're talking. Oh, is there a question? 
Um, she wanted to know if she should have the masking fluid already on her painting. And when you say you're using masking, but you still do negative space painting around it? Around? Is it around the mask? What are you saying? I, not around the masking fluid. The flat masking fluid's already there. Right. I'm trying to make other shapes besides. Other shapes. Okay. Yes. That's what I was thinking. Because um, it's just more natural looking if we do. And like I said, this is all fur, so I also want to get a little bit of dry brushing going on in certain areas. Add a little bit of color here and there to change it up. Is it still cobalt for the most part? Uh, I, so I also have cerulean, and I oh, used okay. some cerulean there too. And you can see also, I'm not paying any attention to where my shadows are at this point. I'm, I'm um, painting them as if it's all one. truly thinking about is just getting my first layer of value on here like I still have that pretty darn dark but it's gonna be all right I promise <laughs> maybe <laughs> Um, I think I'll come up this way. You know, um, I can keep that value as long as I have it in uh, some other places. It'll just look like it's the right thing. She has uh, right here is where that little fold is. And again, don't make just a straight line. Come in here with some other colors and try to make a little bit of negative space with some hair maybe a little bit in a couple of spaces. And I know that this shadow is from her harness, so I'm going to ignore it. I was thinking in past years as well, I don't recall that I only had, but you guys only gave me an hour. <laughs> I thought you guys gave me more. I am gonna, I wanna do this kind of all at the same time, I guess. Like I said, I really, um, where I can, I'm gonna come right into her, because it'll help make a nice connection. I don't want, like, I didn't want this too dark. This is hot press paper? No, this is cold press. And it's only 140. Really? I know, right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, we know that this is going to dry pretty darn light, so... Here, we know she's got value here, so come right inside. Again, don't try to make this as a separate subject. Don't look at it like, this is an ear, I can't do the ear, and that background, I have to do the background and the background. Don't think like that. Think about if you are squinting, that's why I wear these glasses, <laughs> is because all I'm looking at is values. This is light, so if this is my light value, this is a darker value, so I can come right over the top of it. This is going to come darker anyway. Mm -hmm. And back here, I saw this line, and I felt like it just kind of helped me just a little bit. So I can make a little bit of a distinction. She's got her back paws down here. And I 
can carry it this way. Now, if I go over that line a little bit, good. That helps make it kind of all come together. I'm gonna paint around her paws. But I'm not going to go all the way here. Does that even come down that far? I want it to come on this side down a little bit. As I'm painting this, I'm looking at this shadow area. And I don't really want it to look like a shadow. I want it just to have a little bit of um, a value, period. Kind of run it off the page a little bit. So it's already 5:10. How long have I been painting? I know we got a. I know we had a late start. Okay, so you tell me when you when I have to stop. I'm gonna. This was still wet, so I'm gonna bring this right up here, and I'm gonna use some of this over this way. Like I said, this is the really the greatest part about doing animals is that you don't have to make sure that your brush strokes are perfect. I like to make some of these directional because it just helps make it feel better, something along those lines. And I, I, I really do like to get green in my fur and I like to do it when I'm doing hair as well. I just for some odd reason, it just, it works, for me anyway. Okay, there, and this, since this is wet, not soaking wet, but it's wet, and that's okay, because if you can, I, I don't know if you can see it from there, but it's making this go up into, and it's making it feel like it's part of her fur that's standing up, and that's what I want. She's got darker fur in here, but she's got some lighter lines, which don't make a bit of difference. This is still, it's very wet. But she should start emerging here pretty darn quick. I have to tell you, having these monitors like this, it may not look exactly like this, but when I look up, I can see, am I going in a good direction or do I need to go in a different direction? And so far it's feeling okay. Um, I did this even with, with my Zoom classes or the demos, and I, I get a look at my computer monitor at the same time. It's nice. This one's getting a little bit spread out, and I'm not sure if I'm going to like that, but we'll figure it out. I'm going to start making just a few negative shapes right through here. Those ears are still a little bit wet, aren't they? They're very the wet. Background? They're very wet. Okay. Very. And, you can, and up there it looks very dark. <laughs> See, right through here, that just a little bit too. But up here, I was liking it until I got too spread out. It looks pretty, uh, intense up there it doesn't look quite that intense up this way but of course just because it says it there makes me feel like i gotta come in here and fix it <laughs> <laughs> and again I'm, I'm that's part of what this is about is that I, I am no different than you guys i have the same insecurities 
when I'm painting. I'm trying not to get too much detail in some of those areas. I also don't want these to be too hard of lines right through here either. We'll see what that does. But she does have these. Uh, and notice I'm not making little round dots for where she has her uh, whiskers oh. coming out of the side of her face. Those, they never look natural. <laughs> Just lay your brush down, trying to try to squint at what you're painting. And if you have to, bring your finger right down. That was that one, I think there's one here. And it needs to connect right to the side here. More. Tell yourself more, less, more, less. Less is more. All of those things. Whatever it is, say it, but say it in a nice way to yourself. <laughs> I know that that's hard. Um, and of course, the more we're painting, this is why I have a very large bucket. I don't like to change my water, but it always seems like I always have a lot of water over here too. <laughs> so we have to pick it up sometime. I have uh, her back feet right here. And this would be about the time that I would say, okay, I'm ready to do something with these eyes. Mm -hmm. I happen to know that her eyes are like a greeny blue. This one is very much in shadow, but I, and I don't know if you can even see it from there, but there's a little light here that I'm going to try to save because it'll just give her a little bit more life. Yeah, I have that pretty darn wet. But <coughs> say la vie. There's a nice shadow thing happening here, and then it goes right up into like her eyebrow area. And we've got this. And then I'll let that side dry and then I'll move to the other. The other one has a very nice light glowing underneath with a nice cast shadow. So. And again, I'm going to bring this right up here and start making a little lines for her eyebrow type thing that's happening over here. I can see a portion of her eyelid here, and I can also see just a little bit here. And if it uh, runs right back in, I'm okay with that. It uh, seems like it's always a hard thing for us to say it's okay. You know, and it really is. Everything that we're doing is okay. As watercolor artists, I believe that our the majority of what we do is problem solving. 
And from the minute we lay down color to the time we're actually done with our painting, that's exactly what we're doing. We're fixing it. And then this needs darker. I'm going to take some of this as a dry brush and move it right up this way. It's a little bit too dry. I wanted it to move along as if it were pieces of hair. Too much. I don't want it to come down hard like that either. So I'll let that dry a little bit. Also, I know I have some pieces down this way that I want to do the same. And maybe through here and again here. That's kind of the nice thing about using some cold press. You get, it's easier to get uh, some dry brushing. Mm -hmm. This has got to come a little bit darker because I lost my light back. So, and since I know this is darker, I can come right in here. But I don't want it to, um, outline her. I don't want there to be this glow around her head and all that kind of good stuff that um, looks like she's, there's a aura around them. That's not what we want to do. Although that could be what that's looking like right here. And if that starts looking that way, take some of that color that's doing the aura and drop it in other places. Um, I have this urge to do something a little <laughs> wild. Act on it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay, I'm going to do it. You're going to be shocked. You're going to say, what'd you do that for? But I have this yellow here, and I feel like, let's just do it. I know, right? What do we care? You don't want to do too much of it, but you want to do enough of it. There. How's that? <laughs> now, see, I, I can tell that one of the issues with using... Um, the 140 pound paper, I'm not sure that it dries as quickly. Um, I am gonna do this. It, it probably isn't time, but I, I softened up that line and it, it got a little too soft. This probably should be dry when I do it, but we don't have that much time. That means we're done. <laughs> I'll bet it was the phone that ran out of the battery because he's got this one plugged into a power cord. Yeah.
phone is still awake. Well, what and how come I did that? The phone still has a picture. Huh. So that lost connection, but the phone is still awake and shows the picture. Okay. Is it the... Um, did, did you look? See, is that still recording? Yes, I think it is. Oh, okay, good. And how much battery is left? On um, which? This, this is plugged uh, in. This one. It's this plugged in, but we didn't know if it was actually if charging. If it was actually charging. Oh. Uh, I don't know. It, it shows a red light, so I think it's still recording. Okay. Yeah, the Wi-Fi disconnected. Or Bluetooth disconnected. Oh. Well, if I get this done before you guys get, I can't stop. It's wet. <laughs> there we go. Okay, it looks like it's still recording. All right. Thank you. Good job. Yeah, I need to see what it's looking like. So, um, it looks like I kind of need to get some more value down here compared to what I have up here on her face. Oh, don't Yeah, I do I don't want this to drip either. I don't want to lose this. Right there. All right. And, uh, you know, um, one of the sayings is is that your painting is going to dry what percentage later? 30. I don't know what 30 means. I, when I'm painting, I have no idea where 30% is. I have not a clue. So. What happens is I just, where I know I, it looks like I need value, I set value down. I want to make sure that I have a definition of where her leg is. I'm not real thrilled with how this color um, mixed on my paper, but I kind of need to let it dry to see what's going to happen. And let's just do, so I would start for myself, I would start coming in here and laying down um, some of these shadows. Mm -hmm. So that would be my next step in different colors. I'm letting them mix right here. I have this elevated some tip just a little bit here, which I find is very important if you're going to do this mixing right on your piece of paper. But this is what will start showing her from, um, from her background. It'll, it'll be what makes her take form. So I'm going to put in a few of these. If I could have this dry enough to at least take off some of this masking fluid, that'd be great, but I don't know if it'll happen. And it really has to be completely dry. But just by putting in those two little shadows, starts making her come around. I'm not so sure that this still isn't just a little too dark and it feels like it's too smooth. So if I get in here and I rough it up a little bit, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Oh, and she's got this other shadow that's back on this side and that will help 
define her hind legs. And so those are the things when you can start putting in your dark shapes that help bring your painting, give it a real wow. And that's exactly what we want. has just a little darker in between. And I also feel like I should have just a little more contrast right here, right where her paw and her face meets. Just a little, doesn't have, and, and besides that, it's almost the same value as what's happening here. So it's also a nice place to connect. So I have a nice separation with a nice connection. But again, we want to make sure it doesn't feel like it's got a, um, halo effect. She is no angel. She may be more than that. <laughs> she can be the biggest brat. She doesn't get what she wants. You know, that's certain help. I, I really feel like I need to really let it dry, but like I said, I'm going to come back in here and eyes also take two, three layers. Don't try to get it done all in one fell swoop. <clears throat> oh, I made Will my you bring this uh, back on Saturday? I can. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it Saturday. Okay. Um, I, I used to be very much, I'm sure you guys have heard me be very much of a purist, like, no, I would never use white. <laughs> well, let me tell you, I changed my tune. <laughs> I don't care, you know, I, I came to the realization, if it's not going into a show that says it has to be transparent, who cares? Please, tell me who cares. No one. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. And he's my hero, so. This feels like it's a little bit dark. But again, it's going to dry. Again, you guys have to tell me when to quit because I, I can stand here and paint longer. <laughs> Okay, well, that's a probably a good thing. I'll bring it back on Saturday. And uh, while my other one is...